Hello guys, how are you all? Welcome back to my channel. So, today we are gonna see, what if Jaun and Naruto becomes extremely insane, part 1, subscribe if you enjoy the video, and also check the description, so let's begin the story. The large metallic door swung open as the man walked into the room, flanked by two masked people, a man and a woman. He had been here often, indeed, he had been the one who sanctioned its construction. It still made him shiver. The walls were, or had been white, now covered with strange symbols and long lines of text, too small to decipher, and too complicated to understand anyway. They flowed into the center of the room, where, on a sparsely furnished area of barely two meters, lay a young boy of no more than seven, Naruto Kun. The boy's head jerked, but his face did not rise. The older man frowned, intending to repeat his greeting. Suddenly, however, the boy lifted his head, revealing a sinister grin. Ease. The older man winced at the deliberate sweetness used in the young boy's tone. It was only after a moment that he began speaking anew. I have convinced the council to allow you entry into the Shinobi Academy. You will be trained in the ways of the young boy cut him off. And why should I go there? I know all there is to know all there is to know about being a killer, I'm the all-powerful nine-tailed demon fox. I killed your foolish leader, the blondie. The young boy then began laughing. This caused the older man's entourage to bristle at the disrespect shown by this boy towards their former leader, and, for that matter, to their current one. The older man frowned. He began speaking again, through the boy's unceasing laughter. You'd be able to make friends. Associate with people your own age. You'd be able to get out of this place. This stopped the boy's laughing. He stared at the older man, squinting with one eye almost popping the other out of its socket. What's he what's the catch? The old man grinned at his breakthrough. You'll have to behave yourself, you'll have to not kill anyone, and not cause too much property damage. And, the boy's ears were perked up, though his face was unreadable. Taking this as a good sign, the older man continued. And you'll have to take your medication. There was a deadly silence in the room. The older man began to perspire, fearing that his attempt at negotiation had failed, and that the legacy left behind by one of his closest friends, was doomed to rot and die in a white, sealed room. Medication. You mean the stuff that makes me all nice and quiet and docile and happy. The boy seemed to ponder his situation for a moment. That was before he began laughing again, louder this time, and with a malevolent undertone to it. Alright, the older man let out a sigh. Imi no Aruka sighed as he entered the doorway into what he began to think was a torture chamber. Every day he was forced to contend with these kids, and, with every new day, came many new problems. What would it be today, he wondered. Quiet down, class. Aruka sighed, as he stumbled into the center of the classroom, head beginning to ache as a result of the continuing noise. Apparently, Ino and Sakura were fighting over Sasuke again. Big surprise. He did not like to shout, as one might think, seeing as he shouted at the class every single day, but Yumino Aruka did not like shouting. He was a victim of circumstances. It wasn't his fault his students enjoyed being screamed at. That they misbehaved at every turn, attempting to outdo each other every time. Shut up, you flaming brats. That worked. Aruka cleared his throat as he began. But teachers get bored too, a fact not known to the students. Repeating your lessons to younger versions of you isn't fun. And the only kick they get out of it is the wonderful paychecks not so wonderful paychecks that they get at month's end. And so, Haruka's thoughts wandered. He began taking note of people, who, as he had observed, were causing trouble, and the ones who were not. Sakura, Noisy Ino, Noisy Sasuke, Quiet, but cause of Noise Shikamaru, Eternally Sleepy Chaoji, Eating in Class Kiba, Noisy Shino, Quiet Hinata, Quiet Naruto. He stopped there. Uzumaki Naruto. The single quietest student in class. Where Shino would say something once, say, a week Naruto had never said a thing. Haruka, in all his three years teaching him, had never ever heard his voice. That was, of course, because he was never called on to answer questions. Something which made Haruka rather guilty and yet, Naruto had always bested the written tests. He was, in a word, somewhat of a genius. Unfortunately, Naruto was horrible at hand seals and chakra control. He did have magnificent chakra reserves, though. A simple bunshin would explode, because of the excess chakra pumped into it. A bunshin. Not a cage bunshin. A simple academy level bunshin. He also had a strange habit of popping pills at the strangest moments. At first, Haruka thought they were sweets, but noticed that Naruto just swallowed them. Then he imagined they were soldier pills, an explanation for his excessive chakra. But there was no chakra spike. Finally, however, he imagined they were narcotics, and went to question the third about them, after all, it was he who placed Naruto in the academy. He was bound to know something about the pills. The third had just smiled and told him to leave Naruto be. And so he did. He was happier not having to deal with the Kaiubi, he supposed. But still he couldn't help but feel a little sympathy for the poor boy. And so, Naruto. The blonde-haired boy's eyes widened at the sound of his name and the attention he was garnering from the rest of the class. Haruka continued. 
How would you explain the concept of chakra? Dorito paused for a while before beginning to answer. After swallowing one of his pills, he stood up, his white shirt and black pants began speaking in a wavering voice, shaky and rough. A voice that had obviously seen little use. Chakra chakra is the essence of every living thing. It is similar, if not identical in usage to energy and is used for jutsus. Chakra is gained when we partake in training or other rigorous activities chakra also seems seems to replenish itself as we rest. Naruto stopped there, and his face distorted, with his lips turning up and forming a homicidal grin, which subsided, and Naruto's face was once again his own, for a brief moment, as he swallowed another of his pills. After a moment, he regained his composure. Chakra can be used for other things when chakra is channeled into a certain part of one's body, that part of the body gains near superhuman strength or speed, thanks to the infusion to its innate chakra coils. Chakra can also be used as a solid, if control is high enough chakra can be used to heal, if infused with a good scope of the injuries. If chakra is used to use to infuse plants, their growth complex will be enhanced, and they will grow faster, chakra has many other uses including. Aruka stopped him there, eyes wide at the amount of information that had been displayed. Silence swept over the class, as Naruto sat down, immediately ingesting another of his pills. A student raised his hand. What are chakra coils? After class, Iruka announced the genin exam to the students. He explained the format of said exam, reading from a sheet of paper. The test would usually be split into three different parts, the written, the physical and the technique oriented. The class listened intently as Iruka continued. However, it has been noted that this year, the class has had extremely high written test scores, on average thanks to Naruto, he silently added. And the written exam will be screened out to save time and costs. Some students looked proud, no doubt imagining themselves intelligent, while others simply pumped their arms. Meanwhile, Naruto's face fell, and he began to frown. The physical tests will also be screened out because of accidents that occurred last year. Some of you may have heard of Hayuga Niji's usage of the Jayuken fighting style to gain a seemingly unfair advantage. Anata flinched. That leaves the test. Don't worry, people, we won't be asking you to perform at any high level, just random academy level. Replacement, Bunshin. As class was dismissed, many of the students had wanted to question Naruto of his knowledge, especially Sakura, the second best. Unfortunately, Naruto had just mumbled out the door, too caught up in his own thoughts to answer anything, let alone complicated queries. The next day approached fast, as every student prepared for their big exam. There was an uncomfortable silence, as the students took their seats in a row, while Laruka and Mizuki sat behind tables at the front of the class. The first name was called, and the test began. It was not long after that Naruto found himself at the top of the waiting list. He fidgeted, making nervous gestures. He had terrible chakra control, and he couldn't create a decent bunch if his life depended on it. And the third had been counting on him so much, too. Uzumaki Naruto. Naruto's head jerked, and he rose from his seat, but not before swallowing a few pills from his pocket. Iruka's eyes followed Naruto as he walked into the room and stayed on Naruto, as Mizuki cleared his throat and began his explanation. Candidates, that's you, Naruto, must perform a grand total of three dot. The first must be from their own knowledge, meaning one that we didn't teach you. The second must be a display of the henge technique, in which transformation into one of the instructors must be performed. The third and final test would be the usage of the bunshin technique. Three perfect clones must be created and held for more than 10 seconds. You have a time limit of 10 minutes to perform all three tasks that will begin as soon as your personal technique is performed, successful or not. Naruto nodded and seemed to put himself in deep meditation for a moment, immediately throwing a kunai into a wall 5 meters away and shouting no in a moment, he was at the kunai. Iruka and Mizuki were visibly stunned. How could this boy perform so advanced he wasn't even a genin yet? Naruto, satisfied at his demonstration, continued his performance. Henge. He shouted as he transformed into a perfect copy of Iruka. A second shot transformed him into a copy of Mizuki. Both instructors nodded, still shocked from the horation. Naruto then paused for a moment. Bunshin no he cried, as three perfect copies appeared behind him only to explode a moment later in a fantastic display of blue fireworks. Silence reigned over the room for what seemed an eternity, as the smoke cleared. Iruka then spoke. Naruto you fail. Naruto's face distorted in sadness and Mizuki spoke up. Iruka, he managed the henge, and what he showed was terrific. We can't just. Iruka interrupted. No Mizuki. Rules are rules. I'm truly sorry Naruto. Naruto just nodded, walking out and swallowing a pill. Iruka felt horrible. Naruto sat on his favorite swing, going back and forth as he saw his fellow students walk out of the academy, meeting their parents. He was so absorbed in the scene that he was surprised when Mizuki walked up behind him and ruffled his hair. I'm sorry Naruto. Nothing I can do. I tried to convince Iruka but Naruto simply waved it off. Mizuki smiled and continued. Hey Naruto. 
There may be a way I can help you. There's an alternate promotion path, you know don't tell anyone, yeah. Naruto turned to face Mizuki, and Mizuki's smile grew wider. Naruto crept through the door, wondering why there had been such an abundance of wards in the Hokage Tower. He didn't think too much about it, though. His task was that of retrieving the Forbidden Scroll, and the massive amount of traps was enough to concentrate on, though he did wonder if someone had informed the Hokage of his arrival. He looked at his map, and then peered through the darkness. Straight ahead, he thought. Unbeknownst to him, however, he was being watched. The third Hokage marveled at Naruto's skill. Evading most of his traps with such ease and disarming others with such skill. He had almost had a heart attack when he noticed Naruto using the Horation to get past some traps. He had been informed of an intruder by Aruka, but he had no idea that it would be Naruto. He looked on, peering into his crystal ball as Naruto maneuvered his waft past many more traps and into the room of relics. Naruto wiped sweat off his brow as he stepped inside of the relic room. He had never performed so many Horation in his life. Thankful for his chakra reserves, he scanned the room for more traps, finding none. He then stepped into the center of the room, eyeing the forbidden scroll. As he picked it up, though, something else caught his eye. As Naruto neared the clearing, he noticed Mizuki already standing there, frowning. Naruto then slowed his pace, until it was a walk, and moved into the clearing. Mizuki noticed him immediately, and began smiling. What took you, Naruto? Naruto looked at him quizzically. I stopped for a while to learn from the scroll. You did say that, Mizuki cut him off. Yes, yes. Now give me the scroll. Since you've learned dot I have to return it. Naruto paused, then began to pass the scroll over, when, Naruto. No. Naruka burst onto the scene, grabbing Naruto and moving to the side. Mizuki's face broke into a scowl, as he pulled out a kunai. Naruto shook free of Aruka's grasp, rolling to one side. He then looked at Aruka with a confused face. Mizuki-sensei said that I could be a genin if I learned a jutsu from this scroll. Naruka frowned, then looked at Mizuki. Mizuki stealing the scroll. Mizuki then began laughing. Tricking the Kaiubi brat was so easy. He's desperate to become a shinobi for some absurd reason of not letting the third down. Ha. Mizuki stopped for a while and pondered. Then he began his diatribe anew. By the way, Naruto, did you know why when you leave the academy, nobody likes you? Aruka's eyes widened as he hastily shouted. No Mizuki. The third's law. Mizuki laughed all the louder, his voice reaching a very loud tone. You, Naruto, are the Kaiubi. Aruka looked at Naruto's face to find it expressionless. Mizuki had also looked at Naruto's face, desiring to relish the shattered look that would no doubt appear. There was a silence over the clearing that caused Naruto to look around. Mizuki then shook out of his trance. Don't mind it, eh? Damn Kaiubi slime. I'd think the world would be better off without you. Mizuki then tossed his kunai at Aruka, using the time to pull out a few umashuriken, which he promptly threw at Naruto to hit Aruka's unprotected back. Naruto's eyes widened as Aruka collapsed to his right. Mizuki laughed and drew a kunai, walking slowly towards Naruto, whom he thought was frozen in fear. Naruto stood and stared straight ahead at Mizuki, his face expressionless. Naruto then drew a kunai. When Mizuki was not five feet away, Naruto began to smile. Then it extended to a chuckle, which in turn became a stream of humorless laughter. Mizuki froze, shocked at this sudden turn of events. Had the boy gone insane from the shock? Then, Naruto ceased his laughter and looked Mizuki straight in the eye. Mizuki, his confusion gone, lunged at Naruto. I, you damn freak. Mizuki's smile became a frown when he felt an immense impact on the side of his head. He flew into a nearby tree, splintering the trunk with a sickening crunch. He sat there motionless for a moment, more from the shock than the pain, and only raised his head when he heard Naruto's soft footsteps approaching. Naruto appeared to be conversing with himself. The conversation appeared to be quite comedic, as Naruto was notably giggling at intervals. It was only as he neared Mizuki that his words became understandable. Should I rip his lungs out? Haha <laughs> maybe his heart would be a good place to start Haha <laughs> brain juice looks nice on a backdrop of trees throat. Haha. <laughs> Mizuki quivered as Naruto approached his inert body. Not because of the words, but more because of the tone they were set in. Naruto was excited. He was aching to kill. His tone gave Mizuki the impression that Naruto would vastly enjoy his untimely demise. As Mizuki attempted to move, he found that he was glued to the spot. He began sniffling and almost broke into tears. At that moment, Naruto dropped his kunai. Mizuki let out a sigh of immense relief, but, looking in Naruto's eyes, he could still see murderous intent. Naruto began to speak again, with a frown. No, 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 no. I can't kill him with a kunai. It can't cut well enough, and if I want his intestines out he <laughs> Naruto then reached into his pocket and pulled out a small rod with intricate carvings on it. He then pondered for a moment, looking the rod over, before eyeing and gripping it. From its hilt arose a blade of condensed lighting, a blade so thin at the edge that one would only see a tiny flicker. 
its blunt end was thin and long, and when fully extended, the entire thing looked to be as long as Naruto's entire body. Izuki nearly screamed as he recognized the item. The H the 999 Nidam Hokage's Raijin. Naruto grinned sadistically as he spoke. Oh, you know about it. Good, then we can just get to the ripping. <laughs> as Naruto raised the weapon, a hand grasped his own, and Naruto turned around violently to reach the eyes of his assailant. Old man, the third Hokage stood behind Naruto, with one hand behind his back, the other gripping Naruto's arm. Behind him was a group of Anbu who were helping Aruka up. I shouldn't have allowed Aruka to come alone. The third then chopped Naruto on the neck, causing him to collapse on the ground. Naruto woke up in a hospital bed and sat up immediately. He noticed the third Hokage sitting in a chair next to his bed. I, I lost control again, didn't I? The third simply took a puff on his pipe and looked at Naruto. After a moment of silence, he smiled and began speaking. Don't worry, Naruto. The third then stood and walked to Naruto's bedside. Placing two things on Naruto's bed, he walked to the door and stopped. Use them well. And he walked out. Naruto stared at the door for a long time before looking at the two gifts that had been placed at his bedside. His eyes widened as he saw a forehead protector with a leaf symbol on it and the sword used by the Nidane. Naruto looked at the door again and smiled. The third Hokage walked into his office, a reprieve, somewhat, from all the nonsense that Naruto's actions had brought up. Council members desiring execution, Anbu requesting assassination assignments, having to turn down over 120 missions requesting the Kaiubi brat's immediate extermination. It wasn't that they felt for Mizuki, it was more of a grab whatever chance you have to get rid of a pain in your side sort of thing. The recent incident had been publicized to no small extent by a talkative Kaiubi hating Anbu who had been on the scene, and many saw this as the perfect opportunity to be heroes. After all, who would complain if Kanoha's most dreaded foe was wiped off the map? The third sighed and swiveled his chair around to face the window. I wonder how Naruto's doing with his new team. The students filed into the classroom, making copious amounts of noise as they went. They were getting posted into their teams today. Who wouldn't be excited? The girls hoped for Sasuke, and the boys hoped for someone who wasn't Sakura Ino. One might wonder why they'd want anyone other than said females. The reason for such a statement would be that, though Sakura and Ino were two of the most attractive people in the class, they had qualities that weren't as. Shut the hell up, Kiba. Sasuke, ISNTK. Active as seen in that remarkable display of enthusiasm. However, all the noise ceased to exist when a certain student walked into the room. All eyes were on the newcomer, and many seemed to be quite petrified at the sight of him. Apparently, the rumors of Naruto's bloodlust weren't restricted to the adults. Naruto walked up the stairs and into his usual seat, all the while under the class's scrutinizing gaze. He nervously swallowed another of his trademark pills and continued doing so every minute or so until most of the student body's eyes were off him. The class resumed their conversations, though some in more hushed tones and others in whispers. Some students motioned to Naruto in the middle of their conversations, leading the hapless young man to wonder what they were talking about and whether it concerned him. All conversation abruptly ceased once again once Aruka entered the room. Haruka flashed Naruto a bright smile before moving into the center of the room where he remained, sorting out his notes and scanning through some papers on a clipboard before setting them down and almost gasping at the perfect silence he was observing. Haruka had wished to relish it for far more than the moments he would be allowed before someone, likely Kiba or the Sasu club shouted at him to begin. Sighing, Haruka picked up a small sheet of paper and, eyeing the students, began to speak. I'm sure you all know what we're here to do today. First of all, I'd like to congratulate you on your promotions to Genin. You are, as of today, legal members of Konoha's ninja community. And, with that in mind, I expect you to behave as such and not dishonor the name and reputation of our fair country. Aruka took a deep breath and stifled a chuckle as he noticed a few of the students holding their breaths. Now, on to the distribution of Genin into their allotted teams. As you should already know, ninja teams are composed of three Genin or under a single instructor. The teams have been decided by the village council, depending on your standing and terms of skill, and on how certain ninja combinations have functioned before. Aruka eyed the room, resting on Ino, who had begun to support her head with her hands, obviously understanding the connotations of the last part of the sentence. Aruka smiled, letting the tension set in, before beginning once again. Naruto had been listening intently and had along the way, gradually pieced some teams together from his knowledge of Konoha's history and records of past distributions. He had settled on the fact that Yamanaka and Akamichi and Inara would be put together because of the options that were viable and the successes of past similar combinations. He had pieced together a tracking team, composed of Kiba, whose impeccable sense of smell would be ideal for such a job, Shino, whose natural symbiosis with his inconspicuous insects would grant great scouting potential, and Hinata, who gave her a massive line of sight. 
he still, however, had no idea who he was to be placed with. His thoughts were drawn again to Aruka when he heard his name being called. Uzumaki Naruto will be placed with Ichiha Sasuke and Haruno Sakura. Your team will be classified under the denomination 7, and therefore, you are henceforth, Team 7. Sakura had cheered loudly at this point and stuck her tongue out to Ino and a few other girls, before slowly turning to Ai Naruto, who was in the process of swallowing another of his pills. Unbeknownst to Sakura, Naruto had noticed her staring and, looking at her eyes, understood the fear present therein. How could he not, after all, he saw that look every day, walking down the street, from people far more important and infinitely more imposing than Sakura. How could he not, when it was the only look he had gotten from anyone other than the Hokage Naruka, and how could he not, when that look had been etched into his mind, along with the word monster. Naruto scowled for a moment, before hastily reaching for a pill and swallowing it. He then noticed that Aruka had stopped talking. Two adults trod into the room, one a black-haired lady with striking red eyes dressed in a bandage-like costume, while the other seemed to be a middle-aged man, whose cigarette scent was strong enough to be detected from the back row, much to the chagrin of Naruto, who hated cigarettes with a passion. Aruka, after checking on his clipboard, called for teams 8 and 10, who rose and began moving towards the front. This process repeated itself for the next 30 or so odd minutes, before only Sasuke, Sakura and Naruto remained, along with Aruka. There was an overwhelming silence, or so it seemed, compared to Sakura's latest enthusiastically loud profession of affection for Sasuke, which was, as with her other ones, ignored. Said overwhelming silence was broken by Aruka, who began speaking after glancing at his clipboard, then at a nearby clock. Kids, I'm sorry, but I can't afford to wait any longer. Your instructor is Hata Kakashi, and, obviously, he's late. He has a white hair I think, and has a mask on. Rather recognizable guy. Good luck, yeah. Aruka then smiled at Team 7 and walked out, leaving the room, once again, in total silence. For the next hour or so, our newly formed group of intrepid warriors remained silent, with Naruto reading a book, Sasuke brooding, and Sakura playing with one of her luscious pink locks of hair. The silence was broken by a small boy dashing into the classroom, staring at the three, shouting something intelligible, and dashing out. Silence reigned once again. About two hours later, though, Team 7's attention was drawn to a white-haired head peeking in. Are you guys Team 7? Naruto shifted uncomfortably as Team 7 sat together on the academy's balcony. Their new sensei sat in front of them, one eye covered and the other shaped like an upside-down rainbow. Kakashi then began to speak. Hello. Team 7 remained speechless. Kakashi frowned. How impolite. My first impression of you guys is you're impolite. Bad start, people. Naruto swallowed a pill, then frowned. Kakashi then began to speak again. Um, let's start with your likes, dislikes, dreams, goals. Naruto pondered on the question for a moment before Sakura broke the silence. Um, sensei, if you're the sensei, why don't you start first? Kakashi looked thoughtful for a while, then nodded. Well my name is Hata Kakashi I like her, I dislike him dislike, and I can't tell you my hopes and dreams. There was silence. Naruto massaged his temples. They had learned nothing but his name, which Iruka had already told them. Kakashi looked around, noticing everyone somewhat unaffected by his introduction. He scratched his head, then pointed to Sakura. You, pink-haired girl. Begin. Sakura pointed to herself, receiving a nod, then started. My name is Haruno Sakura, and I like it, she began, before blushing and glancing at Sasuke, then continuing. I dislike insects and lizards, and my dream is to he, she ended, glancing once again at Sasuke. Takashi twitched noticeably and beckoned for Sasuke to go next. My name is Sasuke, I don't feel like telling you what I like, and I dislike a lot of things, like my team, my current situation and how my future looks. My dream is to re-establish the Ichiha clan and to kill a certain man. Takashi nodded and nodded at Naruto. Naruto had listened to his teammates' introductions with a degree of annoyance. Not only were they vague, but they revealed nothing that was already known, except, maybe Sasuke's dream. Naruto decided that if they were not going to reveal anything, neither would he. Anything important, that is. Hopping a pill, he rose and began his introduction. My name is Uzumaki Naruto, and I like to read and enjoy gardening, along with learning new techniques. I dislike killing and death. I hope to meet the third's expectations of me and become a good shinobi. As Naruto sat down, he popped a pill and looked down, avoiding his teammate's eyes. Bakashi began speaking again immediately. How enlightening. Um, since today's your first day out, there are no missions, though I must urge you to come tomorrow morning to training ground 23 for your final test. Noticing three eyes looking at him quizzically, Kakashi nonchalantly continued his speech. Only nine of the 36 will go on to be genin, you know. Sakura gasped, and Sasuke looked stunned. Naruto simply nodded and displayed nothing. Kakashi then smiled and continued. Call it survival training, if you will. Oh, and don't eat. It'll all just come out again. 
He. Bye. As Kakashi dispersed, Naruto was the first to begin moving. He picked up his backpack and was on his way. Naruto lay in bed that night, attempting to decipher the purpose of this so-called survival training, to no avail. He then turned to thinking about his new teammates. Sakura, he had deduced, had a relatively tiny amount of chakra, as seen in her numerous failed attempts at more than five bunshin. However, with this also came phenomenal chakra control. He had once seen her walk on a wall and was amazed at how easily she succeeded in performing such a difficult task before she was even a genin. Sasuke, on the other hand, had large amounts of chakra and he knew what to do with them. His scope of tactics, however, left much to be desired, as seen from his rather foolhardy approach to dealing with matters, that is, a gakaku. Naruto then picked up a bottle from the side of his bed. Eyeing it, he stood up and opened his wardrobe, slotting it inside one of the grooves in his intended attire for the following day. He then returned to his bed and promptly dropped off to sleep. The next morning arrived quickly, thought Naruto as he walked to training ground 23, which was a semi-circle-shaped clearing surrounded by trees. He had done his research on his new instructor before he'd arrived. Had a Kakashi. The copy ninja who'd copied almost a thousand with his surgically implanted Sharingan. He apparently only had one to his name, which he had created himself. A mysterious A rank skill known as the Rikiri. Naruto approached the training ground, popping a pill as he saw Sakura. Sakura turned around, gasping in surprise as she surveyed Naruto's new attire. He was wearing what looked like a miniature of the third's battle costume, but the chest was totally covered by a scarf, and he wasn't wearing a helmet. Naruto had also donned upper arm guards reminiscent of the samurai of old, only smaller, and evidently more compact. His forehead protector was worn on his head, and the leaf symbol was also carved onto his wrist guards, gloves and knee guards. The entire outfit was black, save for the armored areas, which were dark gray. There was also a flowing piece of cloth covering Naruto's backside down to his feet, spreading over his legs until they were partially covered. On his belt were a large amount of kunai and a small pole that Sakura hadn't recognized. Sakura looked at Naruto's form getting increasingly closer, then broke off, blushing at how cool he looked. Naruto felt uncomfortable under Sakura's strange gaze and found that her blushing didn't help either. He had had this suit specially prepared for combat operations, and he felt that this had been a good time to test it out. Naruto eventually chose to rest by a tree, eating an apple while waiting. He nearly dropped it, however, when Sakura reminded him of Kakashi's advice. Naruto stared at her for a moment. You just told yourself my answer. Sakura looked puzzled. It was advice. Not an order. Naruto went on eating his apple, then pulled one out from a pocket, offering it to Sakura, who looked shocked and began speaking in a shaky tone. I think that'll follow Sensei's advice. Naruto nodded and pocketed the apple. Sasuke arrived not long after that and looked at Naruto's apple with disdain. The ninjas don't need to eat. Naruto looked at him as if he had a third eye, popped a pill, then popped another one. Ninjas who don't eat are dead ninjas. Sasuke frowned, then walked off. It was only when the sun shone brightly in the sky that Kakashi appeared. Sorry I'm late, guys, I had to brush my teeth with the tail of a five-toothed caterpillar for good luck. He, there was silence. Kakashi, undisturbed, began explaining his test. Alright, then, Genin. This is my test for you. You're to retrieve these two bells from my belt, Kakashi dangled two bells. Before the time runs out. Sakura then spoke up. Why are there only two bells? Kakashi smiled and responded. Only two will pass. Team 7 was silent. The three of them wondered if he was joking. Kakashi smiled and pulled out an orange book. You may begin. A large puff of smoke appeared, and when it cleared, only Naruto was left behind. Kakashi scratched his head. For a guy who dresses so stealthily, you sure aren't trying to be stealthy lesson number one in the ninja world. Kakashi stopped when he realized that Naruto wasn't listening. Naruto was in the process of walking to each tree surrounding the clearing and sticking a kunai from his belt or from under his cloak into each until he came to the river that made the clearing a semicircle, whereupon he began placing kunai on the riverbanks. He continued this strange behavior, confusing both his teammates and his instructor. He only stopped when he reached the first tree he had marked. He then swiveled on his right foot and threw a kunai at Kakashi, who caught it with practiced ease. Kakashi smirked, then began to speak in a bored tone. Lesson 2 of the, Kakashi felt a large chakra surge as Naruto appeared in front of him, swinging the rage in an overhead swing that would have cleaved him in two. Kakashi managed to sidestep and swung his own kunai to hit nothing. Suddenly, Naruto appeared again, behind him, with a sideways swing, which Kakashi only narrowly avoided. This chain of events continued for a while, Kakashi having to dodge one slash, only to have to immediately act to dodge another. Up in the trees, however, Sasuke looked on with confusion. He could only see Kakashi moving around strangely, with yellow flashed appearing out of nowhere. Sakura was having a harder time comprehending Kakashi's actions. Meanwhile, Kakashi was slowly recognizing the technique. 
It seemed so familiar to him, yet so distant. Suddenly, he saw Naruto heading for him again in a flash of yellow yellow flash yandame. It all came back to him, as he lost his focus for a moment, and braced for the impact which never came. He felt heat around his left waist, where he noticed his bells were gone. Cursing, he looked around, to notice Naruto sitting under a tree, panting. Naruto then smiled, and held up the bells. Bakashi grimaced as Sasuke jumped out of the trees, and Sakura walked out of the bushes. Naruto Yuyu, Bakashi was at a loss for words. No genin had been able to retrieve his bells before, fail. Naruto's eyes widened. Sasuke smirked. Sakura's jaw dropped. Bakashi looked strangely guilty for a while, but then began to elaborate. You haven't understood the meaning of this exercise. The one who, Bakashi stopped at the sound of laughter. Soft, it was, but laughter nonetheless. It was coming from Naruto, who was smiling. A large and extremely dangerous looking smile. There was a dreadful stillness in the air on training ground 23, as all focus was on Naruto. He was laughing softly, but the malevolence present in his voice was not to be mistaken. He rose from his seated position and looked straight at Kakashi's face. I know what the damn reason for your test was. Kakashi squinted and crossed his arms as Naruto continued. Teamwork. Kakashi's face showed no expression as he began to speak. Knowing it and not acting on it is as good as not knowing at all. Naruto smiled his insane smile again. Look around you, you great damn retard. I don't think you heard Emo Maggot's little speech yesterday. And I hope you haven't forgotten Sakura's little intro either. Maybe if you didn't cover your Sharingan so much, you'd be able to see what really happened. Sasuke gasped. Sharingan, hey. Naruto glared at him. I'm not done, Emo Maggot. The flux could kill, Naruto's be roasting in Spain right now, but so would Sasuke. Bakashi understood the truth of Naruto's words. He knew the teamwork, even if they were teammates for a long time, would forever be compromised by each member's conflicting interests, not to mention their radically different personalities. Naruto you have to at least try. I mean, maybe you can work something out. Naruto put his hand up. Enough. I've taken enough of your nonsense. I get your bells, you fail me. You reneged on an agreement and I don't like agreement breakers very much. Naruto's smile widened as he extracted the from his belt, activating it and getting into a stance. Sakura, eyes wide, tried to calm him. Nah nah Naruto come on, we can just try again. Naruto silenced her with a glare. Bakashi knew it was unavoidable and readied himself. He then pulled up his head protector to reveal his left eye, a Sharingan. He then discarded the kunai thrown at him by Naruto, understanding its task as a conduit for the Horatian. Naruto charged forward, his blade looking like actual lightning. His swings brought nothing, though, as Kakashi Sharingan busily scanned his movements. Naruto then jumped back and did some hand seals. Kuchiya no jutsu. He called as a human-sized falcon appeared in a plume of smoke. Bakashi's eyes widened as the bird charged forward, causing him to dodge to the side, only to run into the path of Naruto's swing. Kakashi hastily rolled out of the way, and Naruto somersaulted back. Bakashi was having trouble with the falcon, who was immensely fast, and rushed in and out at regular intervals. Meanwhile, Naruto was flowing through a complicated set of hand seals, smiling as he mouthed the words. Dai Jigoku no Jutsu. Bakashi felt the ground shake and immediately jumped to avoid the effects of the quicksand which threatened to swallow him up. As he bounded away, he noticed more pools of quicksand appearing where he stepped. Kakashi kept evading up and managed to get onto a tree where the falcon was waiting. Naruto watched as Kakashi fraught off his falcon and looked to the side where his teammate stood. He walked over to them. Hello, nurse, he said, looking Sakura over. What's a sweet thing like you doing all the way over here? Naruto then smiled insanely at Sakura while she cringed and took a few steps back. Sasuke wisely kept his distance. Rikiri. Naruto was still smiling as Kakashi's arm entered his chest through his back. Ouchies, Naruto muttered through a grin. Kakashi withdrew his arm, frowning at Naruto. Never turn your back to your opponent. Kakashi's diatribe was interrupted as he swiftly moved aside to dodge a falling region. Naruto grinned insanely as he spoke, swinging at the same time. You're going to die, Kakashi. Die, die, die. Ha 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 Bakashi worked desperately to parry Naruto's swings, unable to do anything other than that. Naruto's arms worked at an almost blinding speed, such that most of the time, his sword wasn't even visible. Bakashi's defenses faltered for a moment, and Naruto scored a large gash on Kakashi's right upper arm, along with spreading vast amounts of electricity coursing through the Jounin's body, a side effect of the region. Bakashi collapsed onto one knee, panting as Naruto took slow, deliberate steps towards him. He threw a kunai, only to have it sliced clean in two by the dot. Bakashi held his right arm and attempted to use a medical to stem the blood flow. Bakashi. You can't escape. Might as well commit suicide and let me chop you up, right? Bakashi rose from his crouched position, making a hand seal. As his Rikiri charged up, he turned to face Naruto. 
he grimaced and charged at Naruto. Naruto grinned and swung the rage in a lazy arc, watching as the two lightning blades met in a vast onslaught of sparks and coursing electricity, and eventually, an explosion. As the smoke cleared, one could see Naruto standing quite straight and Kakashi on the floor, his left hand bleeding profusely. I've severed two of your fingers, Kakashi. No more hand seals for you, I'm afraid. He. Kakashi frowned. The fingers could be reattached with chakra, but now wasn't the time to be thinking of that. With his wounded right hand, he slowly made one-handed hand seals. Haridakura no jutsu, Kakashi immediately followed up with another technique. Suiten, Suyuden no jutsu. Naruto dodged aside as three water dragons appeared and charged at him. Butyl, Kakashi. Trying to prolong your own suffering. Naruto's eyes widened as Kakashi appeared behind him. Panashibari no jutsu. But the touch, Naruto was immobilized. Kakashi then swiftly pulled out a syringe and slammed it into Naruto's neck. Naruto's eyes went blank for a moment, then he collapsed. Kakashi sighed. Thank the holiest of holies for the hokage. Then he fell over. Naruto woke up in a familiar situation. Almost identical to the one before. The third by his bedside. Naruto, you really have to stop doing this. Naruto frowned and collapsed back on his bed. A week later, at their allotted meeting place, Team 7 gathered. Naruto was treated to looks of anger by Sasuke and intense fear by Sakura. Walking nervously by, he popped another of his pills. There was an immense silence between the three, and it continued on for almost an hour, before Kakashi approached, his right arm in a cast, and his left hand bandaged up, with other bandages everywhere on his bruised body. As he approached, he gave the team a hearty smile. I know I said you all failed and you probably would fail. I've decided to give you guys a chance at ninjahood. After all, what would such talents be used for if scorned, right? Sasuke smirked, and Sakura cheered, but Naruto looked downcast, staring all the while at Kakashi's bandaged form. Kakashi merely smiled. Don't worry about it, Naruto. Naruto's expression did not display any change, but he nodded. Sensei, I'm sorry. I didn't mean to lose control like that, and I'm sorry about your arm and hands. Kakashi waved it off. I've told you, Naruto. No harm done. Naruto then turned to his teammates. Sasuke snarled at him, and Sakura looked rather frightened. I'm sorry for ridding you of a week's training, and I'm sorry for scaring you, Sakura. Naruto was met with silence for a moment before Sakura spoke up in a shaky voice. Um no problem, Naruto just uh don't go a uh, dangerous on us okay. Naruto smiled and nodded. Sakura then nodded and smiled back, albeit in a shakier way. Sasuke simply crossed his arms and glared. Kakashi observed them for a while. Okay, people. I've got an exciting mission for you today. Search and destroy. Team 7 looked puzzled as Sakura spoke up. Destroy what? Kakashi smiled. Rats. Kakashi eyed Naruto wearily as the blonde boy trained. He couldn't understand it. This Naruto was far from the one he had fought, both in terms of skill and, perhaps more importantly, in terms of mannerisms. For the past month, Naruto had been nothing but courteous to him, apologizing more than a few times, almost until it became quite annoying. And again, he thought, unconsciously nursing his right arm. It did hurt. Kakashi winced as he touched a spot still sore from the follow-up surgery. Naruto's relationship with his teammates had greatly improved over the weeks they had been together. The D-rank mission, he now understood, was a method of building up teamwork while earning money at the same time. Sakura now responded well to his greetings and sometimes initiated conversation with him on her own, though she mostly talked about how she wanted to be Sasuke's one true love. Naruto didn't mind, though. It was good having someone to talk to. That frightened look that occasionally flashed in her eyes would never be remedied, though, but Naruto understood, after all, he hadn't made quite the first impression he had been hoping for. However, his attempts to befriend Sasuke had not been met with much enthusiasm. Sasuke had, however, begun to stare at Naruto in a rather unsettling fashion after his display against Kakashi. The stares would often stay for almost a minute before Naruto felt them no more. He had begun to question whether the comments he had made while in his crazed state had hurt Sasuke's feelings. Naruto had also begun to question Sasuke's sexuality to explain the strange staring, but dismissed those thoughts, though they lingered in the back of his head sometimes. Kakashi had been quite forgiving, though Naruto still believed that he needed to make up for it. Naruto's teacher had been extremely accommodating, especially with Naruto's strange chakra-controlling disabilities. Naruto's Tajutsu, however, had improved quite a great deal, especially when it came to his usage of the Horation. Kakashi had quite a large bit of experience when it came to that particular technique and had shared those experiences quite readily, leading Naruto to believe that Kakashi knew or had known someone who was rather proficient in it. Naruto had also trained a great deal with the Reijin, much to the dismay of the local environmentalists, who did not much appreciate the rampant destruction of their beloved forests. Naruto sighed as he picked up the cat by the scruff of its neck. It wasn't that he hated cats, on the contrary, he adored them. 
but having to retrieve Tora on a daily basis was not an enjoyable task, for she was an intelligent cat, and they had to resort to more intelligent tactics to retrieve her each time. This time it was sleeping gas. What would it be next time? Then again, Tora's owner was a rather heavy tipper, and Naruto always walked away with a bit more pocket money to spend. Still, he was getting tired of all these incredibly boring D-rankers. They were doing nothing for his skills and gave him no opportunities to test himself, though a small voice at the back of his head kept saying that he'd had enough opportunities. As Team 7 walked through Kanoha Village proper, they noticed Team 10 walking from the main administration building. Ino, who was holding a rather large wad of cash, noticed them and began walking their way with a large smile on her face. Heya, forehead girl. Sakura snarled and Ino smirked. Wondering where I got this much cash. Every member of Team 7 excluding Kakashi gazed with awestruck eyes at the large amount of Ryu present in Ino's hand. Ino snickered. Asuma sensei got us an easy seer anchor and, let me tell you this, it netted us one heck of a lot of dough. Ino's eyes turned to slits as she continued. It also officially puts us one level higher than your team in terms of skill, no offense, Sasuke-kun I know you're better than them. Sakura stopped Ino just as she was about to begin a passionate speech on Sasuke's immense glory. After all, it was her duty, as a fellow Sasuke fangirl. Only she would be allowed to praise Sasuke. Sakura laughed inwardly, but asked her question anyway. What do you mean by that, Piggy? Ino's eyes flashed, and a vein pulsed on her forehead, but with a large amount of willpower, she managed to hold the impending outburst back. She even smiled, as she uttered her next sentence. Have you done any C-ranked missions? Silence. Ino began laughing crazily. See you around, forehead girl. Ino walked off, laughing gleefully, causing passers-by to look at her strangely as Kakashi suddenly felt three pairs of eyes staring at him. He lowered his beloved book, which was balanced precariously between two bandaged-up fingers. His lone eye met the eyes of his students. What? Sakura twitched, and Sasu cracked his knuckles. Naruto glanced between them nervously. Kakashi sighed. Alright, alright, I'll speak with the Hokage. Sakura smiled contentedly as the group resumed their march towards the administration building, where their reward for Tora's safe return remained still unclaimed. The next day, Team 7 met at what they had dubbed their bridge, excluding Kakashi. Naruto was reading a book on medicine and their more famous users, and Sakura was attempting, like any other day, to ask Sasuke out on a date, the result of which, identical again to any other day, would be failure. The sun rose high into the sky as they waited, Naruto moving to shade and Sasuke doing the same, with Sakura following eagerly behind. It was then that Kakashi chose to arrive. Punctual, on his clock unfortunately, it was three hours late, on everyone else's. Kakashi smiled as he prepared to give his regular excuse, stopping when he heard no shouting from Sakura. Fortunately for him, Sakura was more concerned with the C-ranked mission request to bother with his tardy behavior, after all, she shouldn't, no, wouldn't lose to the blonde-haired pig bimbo, as she liked to call her, after the recent incident. Kakashi grinned as he pulled out an orange mission scroll, much different from Team 7's daily staple of yellow D-rank scrolls. Sakura squealed but stopped to ask a question. What are we supposed to do? Kakashi's grin faltered just a bit as he explained. It's an escort mission. We're to accompany a bridge builder to Wave Country so that he can oversee the completion of a new bridge. It's a rather simple little thing and the pay's high enough. The guy's name is. Kakashi was interrupted as a portly, grizzled-looking man holding a sake bottle walked slowly and heavily onto the stage. Azuna, rats, and you'd do well to remember it. Azuna eyed Team 7's members, stopping briefly at Naruto to watch him pop a pill. He then turned to Kakashi. Are you sure these twits can guard me? They look weak and stupid. And the blonde kid takes medication. Kakashi lazily eyed the bridge builder. They're the best Jen in Kanoha has to offer. Azuna snorted. I'd better be getting what I paid for. The next day dawned swiftly as Team 7 found themselves outside the village gates, holding their backpacks, Sakura in her neat red Cheongsam, Sasuke in his ninja shirt and shorts, and Naruto dressed in a casual white shirt and long, loose black pants, his head protector wrapped tightly around his upper arm. Azuna approached not long after they had assembled, and Kakashi slightly after. They set out from there, with Kakashi and Naruto both taking the lead, both reading books, though the content of which vastly differed. Sakura was taking a break from the pursuit of Sasuke's affection and was instead reading a scroll from the bag. Sasuke was behind everyone, seemingly admiring the scenery. Their progress was low, but it was to be expected from a group escorting a man not trained in the speed traveling techniques available to most ninja. As they walked, Naruto's eyes were drawn to a rather large puddle at the side of the road. He almost spoke but stopped as he felt Kakashi's hand on his shoulder. The group passed said puddle and continued walking from it, with Kakashi falling strangely behind to continue walking behind Sasuke. Suddenly, an explosive detonated and two figures burst out of the smoke. 
In between them was a thin chain, which was promptly wrapped around Kakashi. One down said one of the figures, as they pulled the chain and Kakashi exploded in a rain of gore. The two people began to move toward Sasuke, so intent on their goal that they did not notice a kunai landing with a thunk between them. Do down was heard, as the two figures pulled on their chains to lose balance and stumble. Both of Team 7's mysterious assailants looked at each other, before settling their eyes on the severed bits of chain on the floor in front of Sasuke, then moving towards a figure holding a thin, glowing sword. No members of either group moved for a second, before one of the assailants pulled out a multitude of shuriken and threw them at Naruto. Naruto jumped swiftly out of the way, as Sasuke snapped out of his daze and headed for the other assailant. Sakura retrieved a kunai from her pouch and stood in front of Tizuna. No one makes a fool of the demon brothers. One of the newly identified demon brothers shouted, charging at Naruto with a small wakizashi drawn. Naruto swallowed a pill in a quick palm motion and began his own charge. His opponent suddenly jumped and came at Naruto with a falling slash. This tactic was, however, interrupted when Naruto threw a kunai towards his opponent, watching him dodge. Naruto's opponent smirked as he spun sideways mid-air and bounced off a nearby tree, making a beeline for Naruto once again, only to see him flash out of existence and reappear behind him, next to another kunai stuck into said tree. The first demon brother was falling before he knew it, with two rather deep cuts on his back and large amounts of electricity frying him inside out. Naruto turned to see Sasuke still in combat with the other brother. Sasuke ran towards the second brother, his kunai drawn, one in each hand. He swung rapidly, having each swing parried, until he managed to find an opening and performed a roundhouse kick. It stunned his opponent for a while, but before Sasuke could stab him, he was stopped by Naruto's form in front of him. Sasuke began to complain, before noticing Naruto's right arm, which had been impaled by the demon brother's claw, which would have struck him somewhere more vital, had Naruto not stepped in. Fortunately, the demon brother wouldn't be getting any more shots, with the rage stuck in between his lungs. The Kashi chose that exact moment to reappear, visible eye wide, as he noticed both brothers down and frying. His eyes slowly moved to settle on Naruto's wound. Their claws were poison tipped, you know. Naruto's eyes widened as he reached into his pocket and withdrew three pills, consuming them, then looking around rather nervously. The Kashi's eyes immediately widened immensely when Naruto's hand began to glow green. He then rushed towards Naruto and grabbed his wrist, as the green began to wildly fluctuate into deep viridian. Naruto, you really shouldn't try that until you have better chakra control. If you tried this on yourself, I think your hand would become something along the lines of say 30 years older. Naruto's eyes widened, and he quickly released his chakra, reaching for a kunai and stabbing himself in the wrist, bleeding his arteries out. Sakura flinched, and Sasu twitched at the sheer amount of blood leaking out. Suddenly, though, Naruto pulled out a roll of bandages and, with his teeth and his unhurt left arm, he successfully managed to stem the blood flow, though the bandage was slightly reddish in color. The Kashi smiled and patted Naruto on the head, while Sasu looked confusedly at Naruto. Sakura gave Naruto a worried look, then turned to Kakashi. Why would he have turned 30 years older, and what was he trying, Kakashi-sensei? The Kashi looked at Naruto, then at Sakura. He was attempting medical chakra treatment, a technique no doubt procured from that book he was reading. He was, however, using too much chakra, which would have caused the healed part to age prematurely, as medical chakra basically speeds up the healing factor, which is innately slow, and, in turn speeds up aging for the healed part as well. Sakura nodded, then rushed to Naruto, to attempt to help. Akashi then turned to a nervous-looking Tazuna with a scowl on his masked face. You never mentioned ninjas. Bandits, yes. But train shinobi would be at least a B-ranked mission. Azuna took a step back and sighed as the members of the group crowded around him. Wave can't afford the cost of a B-ranked mission. That's the reason we're building a bridge to get income, and the Kashi cut him off. That doesn't explain why there are ninja after you. Azuna looked frightened for a moment, then continued. I we, Sakura frowned for a moment. As in the rich shipping magnate Gato. Azuna nodded. The bridge we're building would ruin the shipping industry in that area, and he doesn't want that happening. He hired Ninja to kill me before I could go and deliver the final plans. Bakashi nodded, and there was silence for a while, before he turned to his team. This is officially a B-ranked mission, far beyond the capabilities of a genin. Do you guys still want to continue? There was no movement for a while. Suddenly, Naruto nodded, and Sakura, looking at him, then at Sasuke, spoke up. I think we're good enough for a B-ranker, and, besides, we're so far out already. We should go on. Bakashi's face was expressionless for a second, then transformed into a smile. Bravery is a good quality, people. Azuna sighed in relief, as Kakashi and Naruto once again took the lead, and the group began their journey anew. No one noticed the worried look on Kakashi's face, as he looked towards the horizon. The next battle will be down in ranked I hope I'm doing the right thing. Naruto looked around nervously, as mist began to gather around them. 
He quickly swallowed one of his pills and looked back, then front again, strangely relieved that his team was still there, as was the bridge builder. He sighed, thinking back on the events that had transpired since the fight with the Demon Brothers. Sakura seemed to be strangely reverent around him now and kept fussing over his wound. Naruto didn't know what had come over her. Sasuke had been staring at him for extended periods of time, either at his bandaged hand or at him, in general. Naruto found it creepy, to be frank. Bakashi had been acting normal, but Naruto had noticed him tense up at the slightest sound, no doubt worried, after the previous attack. Suddenly, Sakura threw a kunai at a nearby tree, startling Naruto and making Kakashi twitch. She then walked towards the tree where her kunai had struck and let out a squeak. Team 7 gathered around her to see a snow-white rabbit cowering under the kunai. As Sakura apologized profusely, Tazuna laughed and Sasuke sighed, both Naruto and Kakashi were thinking the same thing. How could a rabbit with a winter coat be living around here? Not far down the road after that, a boat came into view. Tazuna smiled and urged the group forward. On the boat stood a middle-aged man, whose mouth curled up into a smile as Tazuna approached. When all five passengers were aboard, they set out, the man using an oar to push the boat out into a wide expanse of river. Bakashi's expression was grim as he began speaking softly. Our next battle will not be a tune in level he said, face expressionless as Sakura began smiling, and Naruto sighed in relief. It'll be down in level. All smiles disappeared, and Naruto swallowed another of his pills. As the boat slowed to a stop by a small wooden pier, Tazuna spoke with the owner of the boat for a while, before the group began their journey again. We're heading for my daughter's house now. We'll be relatively safe there, and you'll get a nice meal, and beds. said the old bridge builder. The trip was long and rather uneventful, until Sasuke sped up and walked beside Naruto. Naruto squirmed for a while, not wanting to be there, but not wanting to be rude, either, until Sasuke spoke up in a quiet tone. Thanks. Naruto almost fell over at that point, as Sasuke slowed down again and resumed his journey behind everyone else. Naruto swallowed numerous pills, after that, drawing much attention to himself. Bakashi smiled as he watched his group's teamwork slowly build. This series of events were, however, interrupted when Kakashi suddenly bolted for Tazuna and pushed him down, narrowly avoiding a gigantic cleaver, which passed over them and promptly stuck itself into a nearby tree. As Team 7 recovered from the shock, all eyes were drawn to a man who had appeared atop the great sword. He turned around, revealing a dark-skinned man with a mask and numerous bandages along his arms and body. Sharingan Kakashi, we finally met. Bakashi reached for a pocket and pulled out a red booklet. Bingo Book Air Ank listed Nukunin from Kurigakur Mamachi's Abusa. The mysterious stranger began to laugh. I'm honored. The great copy Nin of a thousand knows my name. I am humbled. Naruto swallowed a few pills and withdrew his rage in from a pocket but did not activate it. Sakura pulled out a few shuriken and readied herself. Sasuke got into a defensive stance and the three genins stood in front or around Tazuna. Zabuza smirked as large amounts of mist gathered around the area. He then disappeared, reappearing on a large body of water nearby, his sword at the ready. Bakashi growled and mouthed a few commands. You're no match for him. Stay back. In the back of his mind, however, he wondered about Naruto as he charged towards Abusa, a kunai drawn. The two down in matched blow after blow, each more ear-shattering than the previous, until Kakashi managed to find an opening and stabs Abusa in the stomach, only to have him dissolve into water, a twisted grin slightly visible through the mask. Another's Abusa appeared behind him and swung his sword in a wide arc, barely missing the copy nin. Kakashi immediately somersaulted in the air and charged the moment he touched water again. Once again, the two matched their skills, seemingly on par, until a strangely familiar event occurred, the fallen's Abusa dissolved into water. Bakashi immediately recognized a plan Zabuza was pulling in place. Tire your opponent down with copies, then finish him off when he is weak. Though Kakashi still had vast reserves of energy, he knew he couldn't keep it up for too long, lest Zabuza get a shot of his own. Naruto watched as the duel took place, looking around for the real Zabuza. Suddenly, he felt the wind change above him and he immediately pushed himself forcefully back, in turn pushing Tazuna out of the way as Abusa landed where he had been and swung his blade, narrowly missing Sasuke and Sakura, who had noted Naruto's actions and guessed what was coming. Naruto then activated his rage and, watching Zabuza's expression change. Nice sword, there, kiddo. said the, as he swung his blade, clashing with Naruto's. Naruto gritted his teeth as his sword became a blur, deflecting and attempting strikes, as Abusa did the same. Suddenly, a cry of Katen, Gakaku was heard as a large ball of flame barreled their way. Naruto smirked as he barrel rolled out of the way, watching as the Zabuza clone evaporated in Sasuke's attack. He flashed a thumbs up at Sasuke, who simply smirked and nodded. Naruto then threw a bunch of kunai to Sakura and winked at her. 
She looked at them for a moment, then nodded. Suddenly, three Zabuza lookalikes landed in front of Kakashi, and Zabuza fought, as if to hold the Kanoha Genin off. Sakura, anticipating this, threw three of Naruto's kunai at the clones, watching as they merely dodged aside, and the kunai landed harmlessly at their feet. Meanwhile, Kakashi was having trouble of his own, as whenever he managed to destroy one of Zabuza's clones, a new one would appear and begin fighting again. Suddenly, the Zabuza he was fighting smirked, and Kakashi's eye opened in realization as he felt water surround and trap him into a bubble. Naruto's eyes widened, as Kakashi was imprisoned in the strange water bubble, and all of the Zabuza's began to laugh. Kakashi spoke in a muffled tone, as water entered his mouth. Run, you can't beat him. Naruto frowned, as he suddenly disappeared, appearing again momentarily behind one of the Zabuza clone guards, then behind another, then finally behind the middle one. Suddenly, all three dissipated into water, and Naruto swiftly turned around and threw something that looked like a small wooden plank onto the water near Zabuza. Zabuza looked surprised, and began laughing again. You're damn fast, kid, I'll give you that. You may even be. He was interrupted as Naruto appeared in front of him, where the small plank was. He headed towards Zabuza as he hastily dodged back, watching spitefully as his water prison was released, and Kakashi escaped. Naruto immediately sunk into the water, and Kakashi kneeled down and patted him on the head. I'll handle the rest. Tell Sakura and Sasuke they did a good job. Naruto nodded and began to swim back to shore. Zabuza cursed as he placed his sword on his back and began to flow through a large amount of hand seals. Kakashi shifted his head protector up, revealing his Sharingan. He then proceeded to emulate Zabuza's seals. They continued for a moment before both Jounin called out. Suiten Sir Yuiden no Jutsu. Naruto's eyes widened as Sakura whispered to Sasuke. Doesn't Kakashi Sensei already know that move? Why does he need to use his eye? Sasuke shook his head, no longer amazed at the Sharingan's capabilities, since Kakashi had shown it to him during a training session. Two enormous water dragons emerged from the water, and a struggle ensued, as both managed to injure each other, and both dissolved into a large amount of water, causing it to rain. Kakashi waited for the rain to clear, then noticed Zabuza doing more hand seals. His eyes widened, as he shouted for his team to get down. A huge explosion occurred, and vast amounts of water were conjured up, as the surrounding area was flooded. As soon as the explosion stopped, Naruto looked up, to see Kakashi and Zabuza resuming their fight once again. Suddenly, however, three needles hit Zabuza's neck. He went down, eyes wide as his sword fell from his hand. A mysterious masked youth appeared in the clearing, grabbing Zabuza's arm and hoisting him onto his shoulder with surprising ease. He then picked up Zabuza's greatsword and looked at Team 7. I thank you for your assistance in the Zabuza's retrieval. I will now be disposing of his body. Bakashi staggered back, falling to the ground. Naruto looked at the youth quizzically. Shouldn't Hunter Nin dispose of the body right there and then? The hunter looked startled and took a hasty step back, then disappeared in a plume of smoke. Bakashi sighed as he got up. We'll be seeing those two again. He winced as he noted a few reopened cuts. As they approached Azuna's house, there was silence as Kakashi staggered through the door to be greeted by a kindly looking woman. Oh my. We must get you to bed she said, hurrying him towards a nearby bedroom. Naruto walked into the house, looking at the rather bleak furnishings. Sasuke walked in soon after and promptly sat on a ragged looking chair. Sakura sat down next to him and eyed him dreamily. Naruto sat down on a badly maintained sofa and flinched as his arm began to ache. Azuna walked in promptly after and smiled. Would you guys like anything to drink? Sasuke shook his head, as did Naruto. Sakura stood and asked if he had green tea. Later, as they were shown to their rooms, a young boy stepped out of the room. Noticing the genin, he scowled and began to speak in a low tone. Nobody can beat Gato. You're wasting your time, your energy and your lives. Naruto ignored him as they headed into a medium-sized room with three tatami mats laid out. Tsunami sighed as the young boy glared at the three genin from the door. Forgive Inari. He hasn't been the same since Gato killed his father. She'd mentioned the last part with much difficulty, holding back some tears as she sped out of the room, pushing Inari along with her. There was silence as each genin sat on his or her allocated tatami mat and proceeded to engage in their own activities. It was a few hours later that the tsunami called them in for dinner. Naruto had been reading yet another book while Sakura was filing her nails and Sasuke had been sharpening his kunai. They walked out quietly and placed themselves down at a small table in a dimly lit room. Tazuna was there and a bandaged up Kakashi sat facing their side of the table. He smiled as they entered. The job out there, guys. That was a nice bit of planning. Team 7 smiled sheepishly as the tsunami arrived with their food. Naruto chewed his food thoroughly, enjoying it as the flavor of the well-cooked eel rolled over his tongue. The menu had been sparse, but Tsunami really knew how to stretch the dollar, from the looks of it. The food was delicious. Sakura began chatting with Tsunami on the cooking method, and Naruto listened intently. 
after all, he had to cook for himself, back in Konoha. Sasuke had reached for extras, and Kakashi was talking to Tazuna about the wave country situation. Suddenly, Inari walked into the room. How can you people be so cheerful? You're all going to die horrible deaths. You're all freaking retarded. All eyes were on him, as silence overwhelmed the room. Only Naruto continued eating. Inari glared at him. What the hell is wrong with you? You're going to die, you flipping freak. Naruto simply reached for another piece of eel. I don't talk to losers. Naruto continued eating. Inari was furious. He stormed out of the room. Sakura looked annoyed, and Sasuke resumed his eating. Kakashi stared after Inari. Tsunami sighed. I'm really sorry. He's quite persistent. Sakura spoke up. Naruto, you really shouldn't. He lost his father. Naruto simply continued eating. And I grew up without any parents at all. Naruto then placed his bowl down, stood up, and walked to the living quarters. Sakura gazed at the doorway and Sasuke had stopped eating, as Kakashi nodded his head sadly. The next day, Kakashi met his three students outside of Tsunami's house. His arm was in a cast and he was leaning on a pair of crutches. He noted that Sasuke and Sakura were staring at Naruto, who was under a tree, reading. He sighed. Guys, I estimate we have a week or so before Zabuza manages to recover enough to attack again. I've got to teach you some exercises. All attention was on him, as he slowly walked to a nearby tree and placed a foot on its trunk. He then slowly began to walk up the tree. When he reached the halfway point, he turned around and looked down at the genin. This technique depends on chakra control. Naruto's face fell. And I know you aren't very good at that, Naruto so I've devised something for you, similar to this exercise. Naruto smiled as Kakashi continued. Anyway, the two of you should start on this. The faster you can do this, the faster I can teach you something like what I'll be teaching Naruto. Sasuke and Sakura nodded and went to work. Naruto, curious at what would happen if he attempted the exercise, went up to a tree and placed a foot on its trunk. He attempted to channel chakra to his foot. Suddenly, a massive surge disrupted the flow, and the part of the tree his leg was on was reduced to splinters. Sasuke and Sakura stared wide-eyed as the tree collapsed. Kakashi shook his head and beckoned for Naruto to follow him. Soon, they reached a clearing with a small lake. It was rather pristine, with flowers growing in thick clumps around the lake and sunlight streaming in through the gaps in the thick canopy leaves. Kakashi walked towards the lake and stepped on its surface, continuing until he was standing at its center. No doubt you recognize this technique. After all, you just saw it in action not two days ago. Naruto nodded cautiously. I know what you're thinking. Water walking requires oodles more chakra control than tree walking. This is why I've taken the liberty of making something for you. A buffer, if you will. If you take advantage of the fact that you can perform the Horation. Naruto nodded again as Kakashi threw him a package. Naruto opened it to see a pair of shin guards, both with the Horation Focus seal carved onto them. Put them on. Naruto did as he was told. He was surprised at their lightness and jogged on the spot to test their flexibility. Now, I want you to focus on one of the seals, then on the other. Keep doing that, then walk onto the water. Naruto concentrated for a second, then nodded and began his walk to the water's edge. There was a strange flickering around his body. He stepped onto the water and managed to stay afloat, but there was a constant and rather violent ripple on the water's surface. Kakashi shrugged. It's not stealthy, and your mind will always have an extra task to manage, but as long as the shin guards are above water, you will be too. Naruto nodded. The theory behind it is that you're incorporeal for the second the Horation is in effect, right? So if you keep warping, technically ah, I won't bore you oh, and one more thing. It requires a giant amount of chakra to maintain. Luckily, you have more than enough. In turn, your chakra reserves will also grow if you keep using this little technique. Well. I have to oversee Sasuke and Sakura. Take care. Bakashi then began to walk off. Naruto watched him go, then continued his exercise. Naruto balanced shakily on the water. His reserves had been depleted, and he felt unbelievably tired. He slowly walked ashore, collapsing as his feet hit solid ground. He promptly dozed off, as the scent of flowers took him into a world of dreams. Naruto's eyes opened suddenly, as he propelled himself up. He looked around and noted that the sun was shining especially brightly. Good afternoon. Naruto was startled, as he swiveled his head, noticing a girl standing at the edge of the clearing, picking flowers. He stood and bowed, as she did the same. What are you doing so far out here? asked Naruto. The girl smiled. I could ask you the same thing. They both began to laugh. Naruto then stopped. I'm a training miss. The girl grinned politely. How interesting. I'm picking flowers and herbs for a friend of mine. Naruto out and watched her silently as she carried on picking flowers and herbs. Suddenly, she spoke. Do you have a precious person? Naruto looked at her quizzically. Do you have a person you'd give your life for in an instant? 
Naruto stared at her as she stood up. Until you do. She turned around. Until you do. No matter how much training you do you'll never be truly strong. She smiled. And I'm a boy. The boy turned and began to walk into the forest. Naruto gazed at the boy's retreating form, sighed and called out. Goodbye, Mr. Hunter Nin. I'm sure we'll meet again. The boy froze for a second, then continued walking. If one had seen his face at that moment, a small smile would have been noticed. Naruto sighed and returned to his training. Naruto was found the next day by Kakashi, sprawled out by the side of the lake. Kakashi sighed as he slung Naruto's unconscious form onto his shoulder and walked back to Tsunami's house. Naruto woke up with a start. How long had he been out? He grabbed his Raijin from his bedside and stood up. He then walked out into the doorway. Inari was having a bad day. The retards had left to get killed, and now this. He held back tears as the two thugs pushed him around. Tsunami was on the ground, her head bleeding from a large gash caused by a hit from a katana's handle. Eh, stupid kid. So damn irk. Inari opened his eyes and saw his tormentor on the ground, his head bloodied from extremely heavy impact with the Raijin's hilt. Naruto twitched as he spun around and roundhouse kicked the other thug into oblivion as he staggered back and fell off the small pier into the water. Naruto quickly began to attend to the tsunami, bringing her into the house and bandaging her head. Inari could only stand by as Naruto continued to attend to her bruises. Soon, Naruto stood up and wiped sweat off his brow. He then looked at Inari. Where did they go? Inari looked at him with angry eyes. They went to the bridge to get killed by. Naruto had already moved into the living quarters. He emerged in his black battle suit with his new shin guards braced tightly around his shins. He immediately took a large amount of pills and swallowed them with a gulp of water. As he walked out of the door, he stopped for a moment. If your country continues to deteriorate like I've heard it is, I'm afraid you're going to die anyway. Naruto turned around. At least if I die, I'll die trying to protect something, even if it's your country. He turned and walked out of the door. Inari stood at his place, then took out a torn picture of a burly looking man. He then sat on a nearby chair. Meanwhile, at the bridge, Kakashi was busy fending off Zabuza's strikes, pushing them away and dodging where he could. The thick summon mists hid Zabuza's surprises and Kakashi couldn't see very well. Sasuke wasn't doing too well either. Being trapped in a dome of mirrors in which your opponent could traverse at impossibly fast speeds was not fun. His opponent, whom Zabuza had previously identified as Haku, prepared to unleash another barrage of dot Sasu cursed. Suddenly, however, a kunai flashed in front of him, lodging itself into the ground. Naruto appeared with a swiftness that would have amazed even the best of them. He smiled and tapped his left wrist guard. Suddenly, a large amount of small kunai began to shoot out in different directions. These kunai wouldn't be able to cause any long-term damage, but were just large enough for a seal to be carved onto them. Haku immediately released a large amount of all headed towards the newcomer. They all missed. Sasuke, who had by then rolled away, saw Naruto's plan. There were mini kunai all over the place. Naruto could teleport wherever he wanted. Haku traversed the mirrors, looking for an opening. He looked around for the newcomer, to no avail. Suddenly, Naruto appeared in front of him. Haku gasped, shocked that someone would be able to anticipate his moves. Hello, again, Mr. Hunter Nin. Naruto smiled and swung his, shattering the mirror Haku had been in a moment before. The tree formed immediately as Naruto continued slashing at every dot suddenly, though, Haku appeared in a mirror far behind him. The mirror that Sasuke had been standing in front of. Blood spurted from Sasuke's mouth as he collapsed on the ground, needles sticking into every part of his body. He cursed as he lost consciousness. Naruto quivered as his mind replayed the scene all over again, multiple times. He reached for his bottle of pills. He removed them, and, as he was about to remove one, a needle shattered the bottle. I can't allow you to take soldier pills. Haku frowned under his mask as his opponent stood in one place, unmoving. He prepared a multitude of ice needles. I am sorry, I am going to go and protect Zabuza Sama. Haku let fly his projectiles and watched as they hit nothing. Haku felt a hand grip his throat as he was pushed with such force that his mission exploded into a vast amount of shards and he was pushed out, landing on the ground outside the dome's perimeter. Naruto's face showed nothing but absolute bliss as he grabbed Haku and threw him into one of his mirrors, rushing after him immediately after, rage inactivated. Haku slammed hard into the ice structure, sliding down to the ground. Suddenly, he felt a wrenching pain as electricity coursed through his body, flowing from a stab wound in his lower abdomen. Naruto smiled, showing his teeth. Where's your true power now, girly man? Haku gasped as the rage in was withdrawn, then reinserted into his left shoulder. Mon. Haku looked up weakly to receive a harsh kick to the face. Suddenly, a great chakra spike was felt from Kakashi's direction. Haku's eyes widened as he staggered to his feet and attempted to charge at Kakashi's direction. Oh no you don't. 
Naruto grinned as he grabbed Haku's head, slamming it into the ground. Naruto picked Haku up, grabbing his lag, and slamming him into the ground, again and again. Suddenly, however, a figure emerged from Kakashi's direction. Zabuza let loose a great cry as he charged at Naruto, a gaping hole present in his stomach. Naruto smirked as he used Haku's battered form to smack Zabuza. Zabuza growled, dropping his great sword and rushing at Naruto. Naruto grinned and tossed Haku aside, keeping his rage in. This fight. Wea cried Naruto in an excited tone. Naruto charged at Zabuza, unleashing a great volley of jabs and ending off with a vicious kick to Zabuza's wound. Zabuza, however, seemingly didn't feel it, punching a grinning Naruto's face and sending him flying. Naruto recovered in midair and bounced off the floor, somersaulting backwards as Zabuza continued his vicious assault. Naruto lay on his back after a few somersaults, kicking Zabuza's chin upwards as he approached. Naruto then dashed to Zabuza's stomach, unleashing a rapid jab at Zabuza's wound, then round as Zabuza flew aside, Naruto grinned crazily, activating his and dashing towards Zabuza. Zabuza unleashed a great roar, charging to certain death before Urkiri. Naruto's grin disappeared as he felt the lightning-infused hand enter his chest. Akashi sighed wearily as he jammed another of the third's given syringes into Naruto's neck. Naruto growled and swung at Kakashi, who moved away swiftly. Am dot I wanted to kill Erg. Naruto collapsed as Kakashi watched the grievously injured Zabuza hug Haku's body, crying. Kakashi sighed as a short man came onto the scene, an entire army of thugs standing behind him. Now I won't have to pay him. Haha. <laughs> ha. The injured Zabuza looked up, growling. Bado merely laughed. You can't do anything, now. You and your worthless assistant. That little girly man couldn't do a. He was dead before he could complete his sentence. A kunai attached to Zabuza's arm through his stomach. There was silence as Gado's body fell. The surrounding thugs all began to shout in anger and advance upon Zabuza's wounded form. Kakashi walked slowly into their path, an act that didn't deter them one bit. Suddenly, a wooden crossbow bolt flew past Kakashi, hitting a thug. He shook it off and growled before he noticed his associates cowering. In front of them was the entire population of the Wave Country's main village. The newcomers growled as they advanced, scaring the bandit so much that many began to flee and jump into the ocean. The crowd cheered. Kakashi sighed as he noticed Zabuza's broken form crawl towards Haku. Zabuza laid himself down next to Haku as Kakashi approached. Hey, Kakashi you you know I don't blame the blonde, the blonde kid. I guess I'm actually thankful to him huh, I guess it really did take his death to open my eyes. I wanted to tell him to call Haku my son dot. With that, Zabuza breathed his last, a tear flowing down his cheek and a smile on his face, his hand on Haku's. Kakashi bent down and sighed. He then walked over to Naruto and picked him up. He headed towards the sound of the villagers cheering. Azuna smiled as Kakashi came into view. Inari tells me that Naruto was the one who convinced him to get all of us down here. People. Three cheers for Naruto. The crowd cheered and one man led the group as they began a new one. The Great Naruto Bridge. Kakashi was silent as he laid Naruto down. He then looked at the sky. I wonder. Naruto woke up in a hospital bed a week later in Konoha. He looked around and then at his hands. He fell back onto his pillow and began to weep. Flashback, Kakashi sat at Naruto's bedside two weeks after the wave incident. Sakura had visited quite a few times and Sasuke, who was still limping, with her. Naruto had been quiet the whole time, not even reading any of his books, just staring blankly out the window. Kakashi was worried. Naruto do you need anything? No response. Well I have a surprise for you. Naruto didn't even turn to look. I've requested an entry pass for you and your team into the Chunin exams. I think your performance in the current mission proves that you can at least try to. Naruto had, by then, turned to face him, with fearful eyes. No. I can't it'll happen again I can't I won't kill. Kakashi looked at Naruto sadly. You won't, I believe in you. Naruto shook his head vigorously. No, 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 no. You don't understand. I I I enjoyed killing that boy. I enjoyed killing the assassins. I'll kill again. I can't control it. Tears began to roll down Naruto's cheeks. Kakashi patted his back. I understand dot I'll leave the recommendation here if you change your mind. Naruto wiped the tears away and fell back onto his bed, looking once again out his window as Kakashi walked slowly out the door. Sakura frowned. Exams. She couldn't even do a thing to help Naruto and Sasuke and Kakashi wanted her to enter an exam reserved for the most elite of Genin. Sakura sighed and looked across the bridge where Sasuke was sitting. She mulled over the thought of trying for a date again but dismissed it, knowing what the response would be. Naruto was so much easier to talk to, Naruto. He hadn't been alright since the big wave fight. She was worried about him and it seemed strange but she felt very comfortable with him and at least he didn't just respond with minor hand or head movements or annoying Fezzer HNHS apostrophe. Sakura sighed again. 
Maybe it would be better if Naruto didn't come for a while, then maybe they wouldn't be able to enter the Chunin exams. Akashi's arrival jolted Sakura from her thoughts. Well, team. Today's the deadline for entry into the Chunin exam, most of the teams should be at the administration block as we speak. Sakura nodded, and Sasuke frowned. Why can't we go too? Akashi sighed. Three man team, Sasuke. Sasuke's frown deepened. Kakashi began to speak again. Naruto hasn't been feeling well lately. After the incident with his anger management issues. Kakashi frowned inwardly at himself for the obvious lie. So without Naruto, there won't be a Chuenin exam for us said Sasuke, with a scowl. I'm afraid so. Nobody spoke, Kakashi's expression downcast, Sasuke's angry and Sakura strangely happy until, hey, guys, Naruto stepped onto the bridge. He was dressed in a white shirt and long black pants, along with his wrist guards and knee guards, though the latter were hidden under his pants. Sakura cheered, though she didn't really know how to feel on the inside. Sasuke smirked and Kakashi smiled heartily. Team 7 approached the central administration building, Kakashi trailing behind them. He'd noticed Naruto's behavior had changed since the last time he'd seen him. He seemed jitterier. Kakashi wondered if this would affect his performance during the examinations. As they stepped inside said building, Kakashi began to speak. Well, now. You're on your own here on out. Remember all I've taught you and don't forget to think before you act. Bye. Kakashi walked off, leaving the three genin alone. Well, then. Let's go dot said Sasuke, with barely controlled enthusiasm. Naruto nodded hesitantly, and Sakura sighed. Team 7 walked up a flight of stairs to see what seemed to be a struggle going on. The girl in a pink shirt was on the floor, quivering in what seemed to be fear, as a green uniformed boy with a single most garish haircut and eyebrows lay alongside her, also equally fearful. A long-haired boy with wide eyes seemed to be conversing fearfully with two tough-looking boys in front of a door, as bystanders looked on. No can do, kids. I can't allow you wimps in here. Believe me when I say I'm doing you a favor. Sasuke snorted as the boy turned to look at him. You got a problem, punk. Sasuke sneered. This is the second floor. Your embarrassingly bad is as transparent as a glass of water. Hello, Kitetsu-san said Naruto, waving. The boy glared at Sasuke for a while, then began to laugh. With a wave to Naruto, he disappeared with his friend in a cloud of smoke. Sasuke laughed as the two on the floor got up and dusted themselves off. The boy in green stepped forward. Yorichiha. Sasuke nodded. The green clothed boy's eyes seemed to gleam. I have finally found the opponent who will be my eternal rival. My youthful springtime will soon come true. It was a deafening silence as Naruto snapped out of his daze to see the boy in green looking at Sakura. Hello miss. You're pretty. I'm Rock Lee. Would you go out on a date with me? Sakura backed away slowly. No, the newly introduced Lee's eyebrows wriggled. But why, miss? My youthful springtime irk. Lee was cut off as the girl in pink began to pull his ear, following the boy with wide eyes. She then looked back, smiling. Sorry about Lee, and thanks for the us uh, save. Yeah. Bye. Team 7 stared after them, as they disappeared around a corner. Naruto looked thoughtful. They didn't need our help, he said, to be met with confused stares, as the bystanders began streaming past them. The long-haired boy was Hayuganiji. Sakura gasped as recognition of the name grasped her. Sasuke just looked at him strangely. He was the guy who Jayuikin the examiner into the hospital. Naruto nodded, as Sasuke pondered. Smart move. They wanted to hide their true skill. Team 7 stood in the corridor for a while, until Sasuke began to move towards the next flight of stairs, eventually followed by an ever-hesitant Naruto and Sakura, whose faces displayed silent resignation. Team 7 reached the third floor, where they were met with a single door. Sasuke promptly pushed it open, and Naruto cringed at the sight that met their eyes. The entire room was filled with ninja, all eyeing them, and some staring quite strangely. The ninja sported different headbands, most of which were familiar, such as the sands and the grasses. Naruto noted a few familiar teams, namely Teams 8, all seated on a row of chairs, and Team 10, standing in a corner of the room. Lee's team was standing in another corner, furthest from the exit. They seemed to be conversing. Naruto's thoughts were interrupted as Ino began to head their way. Naruto turned to Sakura to see a wide grin on her face. Now who's the better ninja team, piggy girl? Ino froze, her face crunching up. She turned a pale shade, but quickly returned to normal. Sakura began laughing insanely. You rookies should really shut up. Team 7, along with Ino, turned around to see a white-haired boy staring somewhat wearily at them. Every year I have to deal with you total greenhorns. Bleh. Sasu twitched, and Sakura began to mouth protest, before they were both stopped by a small hand gesture from the newcomer. Hey, I'm trying to help your miserable hides here. Naruto squinted, then began to speak. Ikushi Kabuto. Genin ranked Kanoha Shinobi. Attempted tune an exam seven times, all failed. No particular speciality observed presumably trained by adoptive father, who was a medic. 
Naruto fell silent. All eyes were on him as he turned slightly red with embarrassment. I did some research on everyone here after getting the attendance list from the third. Ibuto snickered. Impressive. Looks like you aren't as green as these other twits. Kabuto felt hostility directed at him. Looks like you won't need any info. Kabuto said, pulling out a pack of cards and shuffling. Sasu looked at the pack suspiciously. Pack retrace cards. He said, eyeing Kabuto angrily. You have information about me there. Kabuto's face was expressionless. Suddenly, a hand snatched the cards away. Kabuto growled, turning to face the thief, just in time to see his beloved cards placed above a thin cylindrical object. Shinobi Rule Number 34, Subsection 2. A shinobi must be unidentified. Any information known about him. There was a deliberate pause as Naruto's rage inactivated. Is a liability. The Budo's eyes shone with concealed anger, which dissipated quickly. Very smart. The Budo smiled, placing his hand on Naruto's shoulder, causing Naruto discomfort. I think you'll do quite well in this little exam. The Budo paused and looked at the remaining members of his audience. Unlike these louts. He laughed and began walking away. Suddenly, a strange bandaged ninja dashed in front of him and threw a punch with a heavy-looking gauntlet. Kabuto dodged, somersaulting back. He smirked, just as his glasses shattered. He placed his palm to his face, gasping. The mystery ninja looked at his crouched form, then at Team 7 and Ino. Laugh too much. Heh. Kabuto rose, drawing a kunai, one hand over his left eye, just as a hand clamped down on his shoulder. There'll be no fighting before the test. Kabuto turned to see a massive figure. The figure stepped into the center of the room. You'll get enough of that later. There was silence as every pair of eyes in the room fell on him. The tune and exam start now he bellowed in a deafening tone as Team 7 moved aside and Kabuto moved towards his team, still nursing his eye. Naruto glanced nervously around as he spotted Sasuke in the second row and Sakura behind him on the fifth. He himself was in the middle, the third row. He nervously swallowed a pill as the examiner began. I am Marino Ibiki, Special Operations Information Retrieval and Confirmation Department. His mouth curved ever so slightly. To the unenlightened, that means the torture department. Many eyes widened as he continued speaking. This is the first part of the Chunin examinations, so listen up. It's a written test. There is an additional tenth question. That question will be given to you in the last 15 minutes of this examination. The circumstances under which you'll be operating are as so. Cheating will not be condoned, and two marks from your total of 10 will be deducted each time you are caught. You only need one mark to progress in this exam. Should your marks fall to zero, Ibiki's grin grew into a strange smile. You and your entire team will be disqualified. Asps were heard, and there was much worried conversation as Ibiki slammed a nearby table, creating a crater in it and silencing the entire room. He smiled as he spoke in the softest of tones. You may begin now. Paper was shuffled and pens were clicked. Naruto stared at the first question. He hadn't expected a written exam. Prior to leaving for the Wave Country mission, he'd attempted to study the past exams in an attempt to decipher the first and second tests. Most shinobi were rather tight-lipped about it as well. Naruto sighed. Naruto gazed at the paper, scanning each of the questions, one by one. He raised an eyebrow. This was a difficult exam. Sakura and he would probably be able to get the majority of the questions right, but everyone else would likely not be able to do a single one. And what was it with those ninjas sitting by the windows? Naruto looked up slowly. Mirrors on the ceiling. Suddenly, his eyes widened, and he slowly looked around. People were cheating. Hayuganiji had around his eyes the trademark bulging veins of the Byakugan. So did Hayuga Hinata. Ino seemed to be readying her shintention, while Sasuke seemed to be faring well. Naruto guessed he had activated the Sharingan. They were all cheating. Naruto was shocked out of his thoughts when a kunai landed on the table next to him. Row 3, Table 8, get out now. You and your entire team are disqualified. Said one of the people sitting by the windows. Angry gasps were heard as they were ushered out of the room. Naruto continued doing his paper as more were caught and sent out. He had noticed numerous attempts at looking at his paper and, when he was finally done, turned said paper upside down. Eventually, Marino Ibiki stepped back into the center of the room. Everyone looked at him. It's time for you to learn about the final question. Now, there's a procedure to this. First of all, if you get it right, it's good for you. If you get it wrong, however, no matter how many points you've garnered so far, you'll fail. And you'll also be unable to take the exam again. There was a stunned silence until someone spoke up. For the next four months till the next one, you mean. Ibiki laughed. No, no. His smile returned, only wider. Indefinitely. Asps were heard, and nervous chatter emerged from the silence. Ibiki slammed an adjacent wall, creating yet another crater. He hastily shook his hand and looked at the wall. I've got to stop doing that this is obviously coming out of my paycheck. He turned back to the crowd and sighed. 
you can choose not to accept said question, the result of which would be expulsion from the exam, but no restrictions on your future attendance will be put in place. Additionally, as with ad previous procedures, if one man leaves, the rest go too. Now. Those who will leave. Put your hands up. Silence came over the entire room, broken by the occasional bird. A hand shot up, and angry whispers were heard. A proctor ushered three people out. Many hands followed, and it continued, until only a few were left. Among them were Team 7, 8 and 10, Niji's team, Kabuto's team and the mysterious Bandage Ninja's team. Naruto looked around nervously, as Ibiki began speaking again. HRRN. Gutsy bunch this year, eh? Well. For those of you who didn't put up your hands, Naruto tensed up. You all pass. A stunned silence fell over the room. Naruto's eye twitched and he put up his hand. What was the purpose of this tenth question? Ibiki looked at him, then at the rest of the genin. In your life as a ninja, you will understand one thing. Information is a commodity most precious. The easiest way to get information is through interrogation. This is a dire consequence. However, you must never reveal anything. Till death, your allegiance is to your respective village, and till death your allegiance shall remain. Ibiki removed his headband, revealing deep wounds and scars, eliciting gasps and squeaks from the crowd. Those who left are afraid of dire consequences. They will be the first to reveal your secrets. Ibiki covered his head again, and was about to begin speaking again, when a large black bowl crashed into the room, shattering a window. If unfurled into a banner, which flew in all directions, revealing a purple-haired woman in a jacket. She stared at the silent crowd for a while, eyes roaming to each of them. Oh for the love of Ibiki mumbled. She turned to Ibiki. 27 teams. You're losing your touch, old man. Ibiki waved it off and walked slowly away, sighing. The woman turned back to her still speechless audience. I am Midarashi Anko, and I'll be chief examiner for the second exam. She was greeted with silence. She sighed. Meet me at training ground 47 tomorrow morning at 10 sharp. Nobody moved. Anko rolled her eyes. You're dismissed. Go, 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 go. Ibiki collected the scripts after the genin had all left. All correct he mumbled to himself. Yuzumaki Naruto. The proctor came up behind him. Amazing, eh? I didn't even catch him cheating. Ibiki looked at the paper again. You think he actually managed to answer all of these questions without Na? Naruto lay on his bed, looking at his ceiling with weary eyes. He sighed deeply, then closed them. He grabbed the Raijin from his bedside and flipped it a few times. That boy what was all that talk about precious people? It was remarkable that he was only thinking about it now, more than a week after the young man's gruesome death. Naruto opened his eyes. What were precious people, he wondered idly to himself. Were they people he admired? Were his teammates precious to him? Was the third a precious person? What made people precious? Was it their combat skill? Their ninjutsu? Was it their wealth? He'd never seen the term once in any of the books he had read. The young man had mentioned being unable to reach one's true potential without these so-called precious people. Naruto frowned. The young man had a precious person. He lost. Naruto sighed. Maybe these people weren't so precious after all. Maybe the boy was mistaken in his theory. And again. The boy had managed to rise from an attack, or a few attacks, that would have destroyed quite easily. Was that the power? Naruto eyed the ceiling once more. He didn't know what precious people were. The next morning dawned quickly. Naruto sat at his dining table, sharpening his older weapons and carving runes into newer ones. He hadn't caught much sleep the previous night, and the question he had asked himself still echoed off his mind as he looked out a window at the vermilion sky, illuminated by the rising sun. He wordlessly put his tools down and rose from his seat, walking slowly towards his fridge. Upon opening the fridge, Naruto noticed a distinct lack of foodstuff. As a matter of fact, the only thing he had left was a basket of fruits that had been left for him by the third during his latest stay at the hospital. Naruto shrugged, swiftly snatching an apple and taking deep bites while walking back to his table. He looked thoughtful as he flipped through the pages of a book lying on his table next to a few other stacks of literature, all the while eating his apple. Naruto eventually rose again and went through his daily hygiene maintenance, after which he emerged from the bathroom dressed in loose black trousers and a white shirt, his shoulders covered by a light armor, and his lower arms fully covered by a hard metallic guard connected to covered black gloves. He was also wearing his lower leg guards, though they were not visible under his trousers. A large number of pockets were visible on his trousers, and he was wearing a belt attached to three spacious pouches, along with a dangling raging. He tightened the clasps on his arm guards and made his way out of the room. Naruto reached training area 47 early. He glanced at a pocket watch extracted from one of his pockets. 9.15, he thought. An hour and 15 minutes left. He gazed at the great looming forest in front of him. It seemed extremely dark, even with the sun shining. 
it was no wonder why they had called it the Forest of Death. Indeed, Naruto mused, was it not here that the two great, Orochimaru and Jiraiya, faced off against each other? And, was this not also where the Achiha clan slaughtered the entirety of Konoha's prisoners of war after the Second War? And, indeed, was it not here that many died, attempting to stop the rock's entry into Konoha during the war? So caught up was he in his musing, that Naruto did not notice a figure sneaking up behind him. Naruto-keens. Suddenly, a hug crushed the back of Naruto's head to something soft. Naruto struggled to turn around as he heard a voice, and stopped. I wouldn't do that if I were you. Naruto froze and turned beet red as he began to understand where exactly his head was. The arms released their grip on his neck as he turned around, still red, to face the purple-haired woman grinning at him. Hello, Anko-san. Anko laughed delightedly, scaring her entourage, which consisted of two dot. The Tetsu-san, Izumo-san said Naruto, bowing, his voice dwarfed by Anko's laughter. Both laughed as Naruto's blush failed to subside. As a few genin began to stream in, Naruto could be noted sitting with Anko and eating dango with her, while the two behind discussed some matter. My whittle Naruto, all grown up now, and even taking the big bad exams Anko giggled and poked Naruto's cheek. Naruto looked at her queerly. Oh, all upset that I didn't greet you yesterday. I couldn't, Narutokans. Favoritism is bad for examiners Anko began to pinch the unfortunate Naruto's cheeks, all the while laughing as Naruto chewed his dango. They laughed abruptly and Naruto looked up. A pink-haired girl could be seen over the counter, staring at Anko and Naruto. Naruto? What's happening here? Anko's eyes widened then became slits as she nudged Naruto. You sly dog, you. Got a partner already, huh? Anko ignored the blushes of both parties as she turned to Sakura. Don't worry, honey. I'm not invading your territory. Naruto and I go way back, yeah, he's like a brother to me, he. Sakura was red as she spoke. I'm not his partner. Anko started. Thought you must be his teammate. Yeah. Sorry about holding your guy up. Anko pushed a blushing Naruto out of the booth and threw another packet of dango after him. Naruto went to stand by Sakura. You look so cute together. Anko smiled, cocking her head to the side. Naruto inched away slowly as Sakura's mouth flapped open in silent protest. Naruto dragged her slowly away as Anko laughed heartily. Naruto and Sakura stood in silence as their faces remained red. Thankfully the silence was broken by Sasuke's timely entrance. Sasuke noticed the silence. Why are the both of you so red? He was answered by more silence. He shrugged. Anko moved to the center of the area, holding a large stack of forms. Alright, runts and bigger runts. Listen up. Anko paused. Everyone here has to sign these forms. Murmuring arose from the crowd. Anko smiled. Releasing us from responsibility for your deaths. The great uproar arose as the forms were passed around. Naruto calmly signed his name and Sasuke did the same while Sakura seemed tense. Anko looked around then began to explain the rules of the test. Right. Listen here, you louts. Firstly, these forms are not a practical joke. They are real and agreed upon by every leader of every village participating in this exam. The threat of death is there, so get the hell out of here if you value your lives, or those of your teammates, particularly highly. Nobody moved. As expected. Now, in this exam, there are no prohibitions, thus you are free to use anything you want to. Swords and the like, you can even use summons, for all I care. All you have to do is reach the center of the forest with two official seal scrolls. Heaven and Earth. Anko pulled two scrolls out of her jacket, one with a Tian, or Heaven Sky on it, and a scroll with a Dire Earth on it. At one of each. Go to the center of the forest. Do not open the scrolls, that is all. Anko nodded, and Katetsu and Izumo began to go around, passing scrolls to teams. Naruto smiled at them as they approached his team. Heyo, Naruto. Be careful out there, alright said Katetsu, as a smiling Izumo passed a heaven scroll to Naruto. Naruto nodded, as the two proctors walked over to the next team, waving at him as they went. How do you know so many people asked Sasuke, a quizzical look on his face. Yeah, Naruto. You seem to know every ninja we've met so far. The only people who seem to even mildly dislike you are the villagers. said Sakura. Naruto winced as she uttered the last part but explained nonetheless. I used to hang around the third a lot. He, being the Hokage and all, meets with his ninja on a regular basis. I usually have nothing to do, so I attend them too. I guess they all rubbed off on me. Naruto laughed as he finished. Sakura and Sasuke retained questioning looks on their faces but dropped the matter anyway. Naruto gulped as the creaky iron gates closed behind him and his team. He turned to see a smiling Anko waving at him, with Katetsu and Izumo behind her, smiling as well. Naruto smiled back and turned back, quickly swallowing two pills with a gulp. But not a rustle in the leaves, Team 7 was off. As they traversed the vast treetops, each of their eyes were peeled for opposing teams. Sakura couldn't help but shiver as a scream echoed from somewhere. 
They traveled from treetop to treetop for some time, before stopping in a clearing, mildly exhausted from the exercise. Damn, this place is big. said Sasuke, pulling out a water bottle. Naruto laughed lightly. 257 kilometers, to be exact. He said, watching both of his teammates gawk. Team 7 each positioned themselves on separate logs, sitting in silence. Hey Naruto. How do you know so much stuff? asked Sakura. Naruto smiled. I read a lot. So do I, but you know all these weird facts that normal people shouldn't dot. Naruto grinned. Being the Hokage's aide part time has its perks. Sakura Oed. Suddenly, a voice spoke up. How touching. The pretty little team bonds and grows together. The long haired man wearing a straw hat came into view. Team 7 was on guard instantly. Don't worry. I'm only here for Sasuke Kun. Naruto looked at him. I knew there was something up with you. Your face seems rubbery. Who are you? The newcomer laughed. Haha. Very smart, Naruto Kun. As to be expected from his son. The newcomer said, poison dripping from his words. The newcomer grabbed the side of his face and pulled. Naruto gasped, and his teammates looked at him with puzzled expressions. S rank Kanoha criminal, Arachimaru. His teammates looked back at the now identified Arachimaru, eyes wide. Arachimaru laughed, then looked at them, his pupils becoming small. Naruto and his teammates froze. I can't move cried Sasuke, struggling. Suddenly, scenes of their own mutilated corpses flashed before Team 7's eyes. Sakura screamed and held her head, as Sasuke began to shake uncontrollably. Naruto was swallowing pills like a crazy man, shaking all the while. Arachimaru walked to Naruto and held him up by his neck. Where's that pretty little seal? Arachimaru lifted Naruto's shirt until just below his chest, where a large swirling seal was visible. Arachimaru smiled. Dodge you few and cried Arachimaru, driving his fingers into Naruto's stomach, eliciting a gasp and a brief purple glow from the seal, as Naruto was sent hurtling through the deep forest, his last visible look contorted and shocked. Sakura and Sasuke were too consumed by killer intent to notice Arachimaru's approach. Arachimaru walked menacingly toward Sakura, grabbing her by the arm and lifting her, watching sadistically as tears flowed freely down her face. Suddenly, Arachimaru was interrupted by Sasuke, whose outstretched hand held the heaven scroll their team had received at the test's beginning. Dear leave us alone Sasuke stammered, shaking. Arachimaru swatted her to the side and threw a still whimpering Sakura onto a tree, the force knocking her out. Don't you remember what I said, Sasuke-kun? I'm here for you. Arachimaru began to reach for Sasuke, who was backing away. Suddenly, a deafening roar resounded through the forest. Both Arachimaru and Sasuke looked in the direction in which it had come from, sensing a humongous chakra surge. The forest was still for a moment. Suddenly, a red translucent glowing arm exploded out of the forest, grappling onto Arachimaru and propelling him backwards, shattering multiple trees in his wake. Sasuke could only gasp, as a figure surrounded by a pulsating red aura sped by, collapsing even more trees in his wake. After a few seconds, Sasuke stood up and vomited into a bush, retrieving his scroll and shakily calling for Sakura. Meanwhile, Arachimaru found himself in a rather dire situation. He gasped in shock, as a first landed on his face, followed closely by an incredibly quick jab to his stomach, which doubled him over. Arachimaru finally came to a stop by a great oak, creating a rather impressive crater. Arachimaru came to his senses and looked ahead. In front of him was a figure clad in a red chakra, almost to the point at which he wasn't visible, and the only thing distinguishing him from a man on fire was, well, nothing. Only a dark silhouette indicated there was even a person in the inferno. Arachimaru rose and from his mouth drew his kusanagi, a blade of sharpest steel, unbreakable and infallible. The flame-covered figure's head seemed to look up slightly, handling a thin and short pole. Arachimaru gasped as the region's yellow blade extended, then suddenly exploded in a burst of chakra, as it too, began to surround itself with the red chakra. The intense chakra flame subsided somewhat, until the figure's face was visible. Naruto's whisker lines had deepened until they looked like they'd been drawn on by a marker. His clothes were still on him, and his pupils had turned crimson, with the rest of his eye black. As he walked forward, the grass around him singed and either withered or caught fire, and the fertile ground cracked and hardened, scorched under the intense chakra flames. He came to a stop 20 feet from Arachimaru. He will die. 